The Vought Vindicator was a transitional aircraft that bridged the gap between biplanes and modern monoplanes. Its design, construction, and performance provided Vought engineers with crucial lessons that directly influenced the development of the more successful F4U Corsair. The SB2U Vindicator reflected a transitional design that quickly showed its limits. Its forward fuselage and wing center were metal skinned, but the rear fuselage, outer wings, and control surfaces were fabric covered. This makes reduced weight but created serious weaknesses. Pilots nicknamed it the Windicator because the fabric often tore under high speed stress. In steep dives, parts of the covering could even peel away, forcing crews to use shallow dive angles, which reduced bombing accuracy. The problem grew worse under combat loads. Once fuel and weapons were added, the lighter fabric-covered sections were heavily stressed, especially during high-G maneuvers. Performance dropped sharply, with slower climb rates and poor agility. Even at its best, the aircraft was slower than many of its contemporaries. A recovered wreck later showed how its fabric deteriorated badly in harsh conditions, proving that combat aircraft needed fully rigid all-metal structures. With only 260 built and quickly retired or relegated to training, the Vindicator demonstrated how vulnerable transitional designs were once combat demands increased. Vought engineers applied these lessons to the F4U Corsair. It used a full-stressed skin aluminum fuselage, where the outer skin carried much of the load. This produced a strong, smooth structure capable of handling the immense power of its radial engine. The Corsair also included protective features such as armor plating, a thick bulletproof windscreen, and reinforced skin over the fuel tank, giving the pilot and vital systems much greater survivability than fabric-skinned aircraft. In combat, this design proved its worth. The Corsair often returned from missions with heavy damage, yet remained flyable, which was a direct result of its semi-monocoque construction. Its strong landing gear and fuselage also made it well-suited for the high-impact stresses of carrier operations. The inverted goal wing, though creating some visibility challenges, allowed for shorter and stronger landing gear while clearing its large propeller. With more than 12,000 produced and a service life extending beyond WW2, the Corsair showed how robust all-metal engineering transformed lessons from the Vindicator into lasting effectiveness. The Vought SB2U Vindicator demonstrated how a lack of engine power could cripple an aircraft's usefulness. When it first appeared in 1937, the Vindicator's performance was barely acceptable, but aviation technology was advancing quickly. By the time it saw combat at Midway in 1942, its technical limitations were obvious. The Vindicator's engine produced less than 1,000 horsepower, which was not enough for an aircraft of its size and weight. Even without combat load, the poor power-to-weight balance meant it struggled to climb and Vindicator took far too long to reach combat altitude. Its top speed of just over 240 miles per hour was also inadequate, leaving it unable to outrun or outmaneuver enemy fighters. Payload only worsened these flaws. While the Vindicator could technically carry a 1,000-pound bomb, doing so cut into its already weak speed, climb, and range. In effect, the aircraft was forced to compromise between carrying minimum bomb load and maintaining survivable performance. This trade-off undermined its role as a dive bomber, since striking with a heavy payload often meant flying slow and exposed. As a result, the Vindicator suffered heavy losses during the Battle of Midway and its design was quickly judged obsolete. The key lesson was simple. Speed and power are essential for both survival and effectiveness. A strong engine not only allows better climb and maneuverability, but also gives the aircraft more room to carry bomb loads without crippling performance. Airframes must therefore be designed with enough strength to handle the stresses of heavy engines and combat loads. The F4U Corsair embodied this principle. Its airframe was built around the 2000 horsepower Double Wasp, which had more than double the power of the Vindicator. This gave it nearly twice the speed, a much faster climb rate, and the ability to carry four times the payload without losing agility. Its high ceiling and versatility allowed it to dominate in roles ranging from interception to ground attack. The Vought SB2U Vindicator showed how cockpit visibility could make or break carrier operations. The pilot sat behind a large radial engine and long nose, giving only a limited forward view. The aircraft's size and weight required a nose-high attitude on approach, which blocked the deck from sight. 
Adding to this, its stall speed was fairly high, which forced pilots to keep the nose pitched up while flying slowly to avoid stalling during carrier landing. This meant that on final approach, the pilot often could not clearly see the landing area or the signal officer. Unlike later aircraft, the Vindicator had no design solutions like extra windows or panels to help the pilot check the deck. Carrier landings require precise judgment of distance, speed, and angle. Because the pilot cannot clearly see the deck, the risks were higher. It was more likely to miss the arrestor wires, hit the deck too hard, or even stall just before touchdown. For this reason, visibility is not just a comfort factor, but a major element of operational safety. Vaud carried the lessons from the Vindicator into the design of the later F4U Corsair. The early Corsair variants also had serious visibility problems due to its huge propeller, long nose, and rearward cockpit position that gave the pilot very poor forward view. To solve this, engineers added a rectangular window in the wing route so pilots could see directly below the aircraft while lining up on the deck. Later models raised the cockpit slightly and introduced a bulged clear-view canopy to improve forward and side visibility. Engineers also added a stall strip on the wing to make stall behavior more predictable. Even with these fixes, real-world issues might occur such as oil splash from cowl flaps that obscured the wing root windows. Still, the Corsair solutions directly addressed the Vindicator's flaws, which showed how careful design adjustments can turn a flawed design into an effective carrier fighter. The SB-2U Vindicator suffered greatly from poor aerodynamics. Its thick wings, fixed landing gear, and exposed tail wheel all created drag, which reduced both speed and efficiency. Engineers attempted to solve dive control by experimenting with reversible propellers and later heavy dive flaps. These flaps generated so much drag that full engine power was needed just to maintain control, leaving little margin for maneuvering. Because the system was unreliable, pilots often dropped the landing gear in dives to slow the aircraft. The result was a dive bomber that was underpowered and was constantly plagued by drag. Even later, more powerful Vindicator versions still performed poorly in speed and ceiling because the overall design was not aerodynamically clean. Every part of a high-performance aircraft must be smoothly integrated to keep resistance minimal. Extra weight or exposed parts directly translate into lost speed, climb rate, and ceiling. Vought's engineers applied these lessons when designing the F4U Corsair. Despite being much larger and heavier than the Vindicator, the Corsair was shaped to reduce drag wherever possible. Its main landing gear retracted fully into the wings with a clever 90-degree rotation. This allowed even the large wheels to lie flat and enclosed by doors. This kept the wing profile smooth and clean. The inverted gull wing design solved another design challenge. It gave clearance for the huge propeller without requiring long, drag-heavy landing struts. The Corsair also hid its tail wheel and built cooling intakes into the wing roots instead of using external scoops, which kept airflow smooth. Combined with its clear view canopy and refined wing design, these measures gave the Corsair both high top speed and good low speed handling. Unlike the drag-bound Vindicator, the Corsair proved that careful attention to streamlining could turn a large, powerful aircraft into a capable carrier fighter. Vought's experience with the Vindicator was particularly difficult. They learned that Vindicator's flimsy fabric and metal construction proved to be a major liability, which showed that all-metal monocoque fuselage was essential to withstand both combat damage and operational stress. They also learned that the Vindicator's underpowered engine and lack of aerodynamic cleanliness severely limited its combat effectiveness. This led them to design the Corsair around the most powerful engine available, resulting in a fighter with a massive advantage in speed and climb rate. Thank you for watching, and see you in our next videos.